Entrepreneur. Today we're interviewing Midday Squares. We don't have a sign yet, but the point is, they sold 30,000 bars in I believe 75 days. That's like 17 bars an hour, 24 hours, seven. So let's go right in. outside in the snow. Listen, for the guys that, for the two people actually, the two guys and girls who don't know about you, what are you guys all about? Honestly, we're, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, we're a functional chocolate bar company. Um, when we were looking into doing this, like seriously, for real, you know, we had all felt that over the years, if you looked at the way the market was progressing, there was nobody that was really giving love to chocolate. So if you look at like, Everything that's out there in terms, sorry, in terms of functional um, protein bars, the Lyra's, the RX's, and I got mad love for all of them because I still eat them. Um, it's all chocolate flavor, and chocolate flavor is very, very different than chocolate. And then you had this huge movement that was happening on the real chocolate side of of a lot of different chocolate companies coming out that were doing some sustainable packaging, some ethically sourced stuff, and and that was all great and dandy, and I'm big fans of those too but they were focused completely on chocolate. Right. And there was like, nobody had taken the two worlds and had a baby with them. And, uh, you know, growing up an extreme chocolate lover, it was like, I feel like when I go to one side, I, I get no love. And when I go to the other side, I get the love I need, but I want that in between because I hate chocolate flavor. Like I, I just, I hate chocolate flavor. It's not real chocolate. And so um, my wife over here, uh, we weren't even wife, uh, we weren't even dating at the time, but when you started, yeah, no way, okay, no, we yeah. lived with each other. We were roommates. All three, or no, no just no, no, I wasn't with them. <laughs> no, that's a. I mean, we get into the family thing after because I've, sure, sure. I've met everybody in the family before I met her, which yeah. is a weird story, and that was by pure chance. Yeah. But she was in fashion, and I was in software, um, and I would actually invested in her fashion company, and at that time she was going through like a, a crisis of where she was gonna put her office and didn't have space, so I told her to just uh, move into my condo and, and basically make the condo a production facility for her fashion. And at that time, I was obsessed with chocolate in the afternoon, um, but I was eating a lot more high sugar content chocolates. Right. Junk. Junk. Do you have any brands or do you want to mention Yeah, brands? Oh Henry. I'm a, I'm no a, way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, a, I'm a massive Oh Henry fan. You feel this is an expression of Oh Henry or like influenced no. by it? Or no, no. no. Because I create this. This is a, an it's expression. It's your recipe. Oh, this yeah. is an expression of her and I'll let her get into that. Yeah, so pretty much I've always loved cooking. I'm a, I'm a big foodie at heart. I, I love everything. So I play in the kitchen all the time. When I lived at home originally, my mom hated it. I would make like crazy messes. Ask my brother, like I'd be in the kitchen for five hours, <laughs> and, and the, the dishes would stack up. So as soon as I moved out, I really started opening up and creating. So when he was eating all this junk, like I said, we weren't even dating. He was just my best friend. I was like, Nick, we need to cut that shit. Like, there's so much good food out there that you can eat that are gonna that's gonna satisfy your craving. So I'm like, okay, prove it. Like, yeah. make me something. Like, if you want me to stop this, make me something. And so, <laughs> like, at the beginning, I took, you know, a bunch of dates and a bunch of this and a bunch of that, and I created this, like, brownie, healthy brownie, um, that I was making for him, and he was just, like, free. Right. And he completely put the other stuff in the garbage. Right? I haven't, actually haven't seen you pick up an aura. I know Henry since. So, actually, funny story. We were on the way to Toronto for our packaging show, and I had not had a Reese's Pieces cup in so long. And I was like, we were at a stop, and I'm like, oh, I just need a Reese's Pieces cut. 
I had it in the car and it, would just, it tasted so artificial because once your palate like kind of a climb right, 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 this right, that, right. I had to throw it out because I couldn't even I couldn't even deal with well, it. Well, we cut refined sugar from our lives, so you know like okay, yeah, completely, yeah, completely, yeah. Completely, okay. yeah. So you know like instead of having jams anymore, we we take strawberries, we you know put it on the stove, right. and let it you know soften, and so. We really changed our lifestyle. I, mean, I was thirty pounds. Yeah, I was thirty <laughs> pounds heavier. <laughs> yeah, Nick was thirty pounds heavier, and um, yeah, so I created this product for him, a version of it. Right. Obviously, it wasn't this when I was making it for Nick, um, because you know when you're in the market, you need to hit certain nutritional comp like you know things, um, protein, sugar count, calories, function. Right? right? Someone's not going to buy a product that has 40 grams of sugar in it. And dates, as much as they're healthy for you, they do have a lot of sugar. So, um, once we decided to, um, actually, you asked how we started this. So, yeah, I pretty much was making this for Nick. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, that's, that, that's that's where it yeah, started. Before I get, go further. The journey of commercializing was it a whole other mm -hmm. journey, but, but that's yeah. how it started. Yeah. yeah. And you literally came out of nowhere. I was like, what is happening here? Because I had, because basically your stories are like the game, right? Yeah. You have like, I don't know how many stories at a time. I know yeah. Daniela was doing it, KG MTL was doing yeah. it, a few other people were doing it. I was just like, okay, this is probably just another chocolate bar company. Yeah. Then I look into the ingredients and I'd like to get into that a bit. Like, sure. so you probably get the questions about like, why yak and syrup? Like, yeah. what are the functional benefits? Can I take the yak on part? Sure. Yeah, 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 sure. So, yeah. like, definitely, yeah. Please. So, I'm like a crazy, um, I'm crazy into biochemistry. Okay. Really, really into it. And um, I was on a couple of Reddit boards and we were, I actually uh, was pricking myself for a long time to take my glucosamine levels okay, in the morning. Yeah, we got, I, my, I asked my doctor to give me the thing for the strips and everything. And um, so we were, I was on a chat board and this was like after she had introduced me to it, she was kind of using it and I was going through all the stuff and everybody was talking about this syrup that doesn't spike your 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 blood sugar levels, mm -hmm. and there's a few um, pros. I mean, we don't want to necessarily get into all the medical benefits, but the idea of not spiking your glucosamine level has always been something that's fascinating because you know that, that those crashes that you feel, and your 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 biochemistry is largely uh, relying on that aspect okay. of the body. So. For us, when we were looking into it, I was, you know, everyone was talking on the boards that Yakon syrup does not spike your your, your glucose levels. Like no, I don't. It, it's a zero glycemic zero index. Glycemic. Yeah. Okay, it flows through the body. Um, just it, it's a flow through, yeah. so it doesn't actually get processed in that way. And so basically, we started. I started pricking myself and 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 started actually checking my blood uh, meters after it happened and. It, it was really working, and so we started incorporating Yakon syrup to pretty much everything. Like when, when she would make these pancakes, in the, it just became our replacement syrup. It's also really good for Chinese. Yeah. It, it, ha it has, like, you can make Chinese dishes with it. Okay, no way, nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. And actually, what I thought first was like coconut nectar. Yes, Is there so a link? How, we, how similar? No, like? coconut nectar we've played around with. Right. I mean, I'm sure down the, the line you will see it in our, in our product dev. Um, but like I said, we really just had an attachment to the Yakon syrup. Like, and coconut uh, syrup is a glycemic index hit, so okay, you will okay. feel... So many of the customers, and a lot of people are not uh, familiar with Yakon syrup, so a lot of our, our, our crew love like messages us on Insta and saying, you know what's crazy is I don't crash after. Right. And and that's there's a twofold answer to that question. One is a lot of people don't realize um, that Cocoa is a derivative of caffeine, so it's like a caffeine right. bean. And so it's got a derivative of caffeine in it, not the typical caffeine. That's why they're not required on chocolate bars to tell you that, you know, the caffeine percentage right. the, way, um, uh, the way coffee is. But it's a different derivative of it that gives you an incredible amount of energy. And then when balanced with the proper sugars, you have no crash because your glucose levels aren't spiking and then coming down. And so, at the end of the day, you know, those are the reasons why. And unfortunately, a coconut nectar uh, doesn't provide the same benefits, but it has amazing uh, flavor profile. Amazing. Right. Yeah. Right. Caramelly. It's amazing. Yeah. Right, if you just look at the texture, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Even the flavor, the flavor, when mixed with certain things, really creates this, like, crisp uh, caramel taste. Yeah. Right. Right. Nice. Cool. Awesome. Appreciate it. So, 
like I said, you literally took the market by storm. There was absolutely no knowing. When did you guys start actually? 75 days ago, is that it? Yeah, about rough, like rough three months ago we rough started. I, I joined three months ago. They've been developing for a while. Right. So you guys have been working on for what, nine and a half months? Yeah, so we, yeah, exactly. It's been a year Nick and I started working on because like I said, we, he left the software industry, I left fashion, right. and we want to align our lives. So we said, he's like, let's, let's commercialize the product you We actually for. decided one week before our wedding that yeah. we were doing this for a moment. Yes. Yeah. One week before our And wedding. from there, we said okay, and we, you know, Nick comes from a family that's been in the food industry forever, um, but I didn't know much about it, I just knew that I love food, like I, like I said, I was always in the kitchen. Um, but we actually worked with McGill uh, Food Science, their whole department there. And, and How did you reach out? We just reached out. We you just like literally emailed called them. Called. Yeah. You cold called. Okay. Yeah, we're just like, we called McGill. We're like, hey, we're a new startup based in Montreal. Um, we're looking for guidance. Did you even have the packaging yet or not, no, not even? Nothing. We nothing. just like, we just want to speak with your professor, you know, right. and see if we can just shoot the shit. And they were super interested in what we were doing. They called us in um, for a meeting and we hit it off and... I want to add that yeah, it took three months yeah, for them to get back to okay. us. Yeah. But we kept... We, yeah, we kept grinding yeah. and we kept. We sent like two emails and then finally um, a TA, teacher's assistant, reached out to us saying like, Hey, got this voicemail, who's <laughs> calling you back? Like, hey, how can I help you? And then 24 hours later we were meeting with Professor um, I, won't, I don't. I won't mention her name. Yeah. She's on the NBA, so Not but, yeah. but we'll call her professor. She was unbelievable. Unbelievable. And, and the TA and the students. Were yeah, really I mean Lucas and Marika. We can mention them. They're in our video. Shout out and Lucas. Stuff. Shout out Marika. You guys are awesome. <laughs> uh, they were a huge help, and I hope for them to be able to join our team. You know, eventually. Right, right, right. Yeah. Nice. And in terms of like actual action steps, because like you mentioned, like there's literally nothing, no framework that can give to entrepreneurs, and I feel that's a big reason why most fail. Yeah. So, how did you, literally, the question, like, how did you sell thirty thousand chocolate bars in seventy-five days? So what people don't realize is to make a product that looks like this, right. with this boxing, you know, with the whole thing, takes time, it takes effort, it right. takes perfection. You know, and you need to be doing your market research. You need to be calling people, learning from people, listening, trying things, retrying them, not being okay with just good. You need to be, you need to want great. You know, and I think that's the difference, right? And the thing is, we worked on this a year before we launched it. We launched it, what, 75 days ago? You August know, in 15th. August 15th. And yeah, it exploded, but what went into it before was the hard work, you know? And now, I mean, it's, it's even crazier, but. It's, it's your groundwork that's really important, right. you know? Right. I think that what's really important in my eyes is that, uh, in all our eyes, is that we built a family from our customers. And I think us showing the love that we show and putting the effort into the customer has allowed us to, you know, explode to that amount of bars being sold. Because they're not just buying the bars, they're buying the life that we have with them. They're just following their journey with us and they're, we're making sure they live the exact same thing. Like, you know, whether it's going, Nick's going to Toronto today, He's going to show the journey with him and they're going to follow his path. Whether it's her and I going up north tonight to discuss the pop-up shops they're going to do, they're going to live it through us. And I find that that family is so strong and has taken us to success. Obviously, the work that's been put into this is, is amazing, the foundation. But what we're building is a cult and a, and a family for the lifestyle of midday squares. Tell me what we want. But I will, let's get into action steps, yeah. right? Let's get into yeah. concrete nice. action steps. Um, on my phone, I have the original packaging. I feel like we should show that. Sure. Yeah. sure. Let, let's get into that. Yeah, that. I think this is super important. Yeah. Cool. And actually, if you could dive into like how we create that culture. Because yeah. this is just a question of like doing stories or transparency. Transparency. Is very okay. important. Being real. Being authentic. real. But, authentic. But it's everything. We show the good, the bad, the ugly, and the ugly exactly. gets ugly. Okay. But we're finding that the family really likes that, and they reach out to us. And you know, it's not just answering stuff, people's messages. It's actually right. putting personalization to it, and actually listening to what they say and responding. You know, I, I've been in companies where I've seen the DMs. And it's a heart, it's just a, or it's like, it's love this. Response. It's an automatic response. We literally, I sit sometimes till 2.30 in the morning, going through the messages and actually understanding what the messages were from and actually giving them something that they would actually have value for, you know? If it's a question, I'll make sure I get the answer from one of them. If it's about the product itself, but we'll make sure it's deep dive and not just a, 
um, it's good for you. You know, it's we'll go very into it. Right. You know, if they want to know a retailer, we'll give them the exact retailers in a distance of a kilometer right, they where they can find. Them to a link. Exactly. Okay. Right. And yes. I'm, we're so against that. It, you know, and I think that it takes a lot more time, but the love they appreciate and. It's also, we're appreciating the love that they're giving us in return, and it pushes us every day, you know, we, we get jacked up just from, from our customers. Right, right. And you feel most of the hype has come just from people restoring you, or...? Well, or yeah, you... I think we, you know, we, do you want to go back yeah. to the actual... Yeah, yeah, okay, so this is for me um, um, a super exciting thing and I, th I would love for you guys to show it in the edits yeah. after but this this was the first ever iteration of this package. I was called Midday Coco. It's called Midday Coco. Midday and um, <laughs> yeah so the, the product was called Midday Coco. They're gonna they're gonna actually throw it up on the screen. After. Yeah. We'll send you the actual. I'll send we you the actual. Right. Yeah. You yeah. yeah I'll send, I'll send so. you the actual PMG on that. Nice. Um, so I'm pretty uh, different in my approach to how I believe uh, businesses should be built, especially when building like brand type businesses. And it was funny, we were just, we, I, we have this guy that's starting to be known, his name's Daniel the Intern, you know, he works here on Mondays. Right, I, I saw yeah, actually yeah, yeah, he's, 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 he's a guy. Shout, shout out Daniel, Daniel the Intern. Shout out Daniel the Intern. Everyone loves you. Yeah, he's great. And in exchange we do, he's got an idea he's working on. So he comes in, he gives us his time, and then we all try to sit down with him in different areas that we're strong in and give him our time. Nice. And we just went through, how do we get this thing to market? And so the idea is for me is, um, especially in food, food are very much like fingerprints. Uh, sorry, palates very much like fingerprints. They're very unique um, in the sense that what tastes good to you is gonna be different than what tastes good to her. And so I think the process is very intuitive. Um, and if you don't go the intuitive process, you start to lose track. And so if we go to how do you get something to market, I always start with brand identity. Always. always. Everything I've ever done in my life. Before you ever even identify like the, the colors. Yeah, the it's just what is our name. Right. And um, when we were brainstorming the name at that point, I, you know, for me, I listened to a, a ton of podcasts, read tons of books. Any podcasts? Uh, so, so I, I started off heavily with going into the podcast game with Tim Ferriss, obviously, okay, obviously you know, the, yeah. the, the main stuff. Got a bit tired of it towards the end because, I don't know, I just... I just got a little longer. Yeah, Long. a little longer. Um, and, but then when we got into the food industry, uh, I listened to every podcast on BevNet. Uh, they have an incredible food podcast that, that just interview different brands on CPG. Um, how this is built with Guy Raz, I love. Uh, you know, even with his name, talks. You know, he's he's super into psychedelics. Joe Rogan. I, I love, Joe she doesn't him. like it so much, but I love getting into some. Like the stuff. other guy. Some deep Joe Rogan stuff. Um, oh, Kevin Rose. Kevin is great Rose. Too. Yeah. Kevin Rose Kevin is great Rose too. Is like. And so. Um, in those podcasts, you know, I, I always fell in love with the story from Five Hour Energy. And Five Hour Energy was, he took his name and said, well, what the heck does my product do and what is it for? And just, that's the name, right? It's like you, Five Hour Energy. Box five Water. Hour, yeah, Box Water, all these companies. And so it was pretty, um, it was pretty clear. And I'm gonna say me and her, not to exclude him, he just wasn't part of the team at this time because um, he was running his business. Um, we just kept them going back and forth and it was like, what do we eat this thing for? Well, every afternoon I get a sweet tooth. It comes at around 1 p.m. I have this hunger crunch. And um, at this point, it was like, okay, so we know we want an afternoon name, you know? And then we're starting to play with afternoon, but the afternoon doesn't roll off the tongue so well. And then next thing you know, we come up with this thing called midday. And then the second thing was what was the product? And at that time, we were like so jacked up about chocolate that we were like midday chocolate, didn't sound so good, and we ended up with midday cocoa. And that's where the first product iteration comes. It's like midday cocoa. Yeah, midday cocoa, and we pump ourselves up. Right. And I think this is what I was telling to Daniel when we were speaking. I see a lot of uh, entrepreneurs go through it. I've been through it in my life. Analysis paralysis. You end up wanting to plan everything get as much information on everything you get stuck right. and then you never move forward my thing i think even our thing in this company culture that we've adopted is just keep moving forward yeah. 
Don't think too much about it. If it intuitively feels right, just move forward. And so Midday Cocoa fell right. We slapped it on, we got on Photoshop that night and we made this package. And the reason why the package is so important is because it gives you excitement. And that excitement is what rolls over to the next day to allow you to charge forward into the next tasks that are gonna be hard. And I think that what people need to understand is every day you need to have one big thing, three little things to try to accomplish. And what you also need to realize as an entrepreneur is nobody really knows what they're doing. And as soon as you realize that, it, you start feeling a lot less stress. You're com you know, you feel more secure, you feel more confident to call somebody and ask questions. I think the biggest thing is like Nick says, you always gotta go forward, keep taking forward steps, but you need to not be afraid to call a company. Oh, I, I'm looking for packaging. I go on Google, I start looking for a packaging company. I see 10 that come up. I get on the phone, I start calling them. Hi, I'm based in Montreal, I'm a startup. I do this, this, and this. I'm looking for packaging. I really don't know what I'm doing. This is my first time going at this. I need somebody who can help me take me through it. And then you go through it, and then you call another company, and you go through it, and then you start building quotes. That's what it Iterating. is. Iterating. Iterating exactly. quickly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But there's a method to the madness on iteration and creating. Um, a lot of people, see, you can scale pretty quickly on anything that you want to do. If you have nothing, if you, if you have zero experience on it, if you do it the right way. And what I mean by the right way is all these experts in the industry, a guy that you call from packaging that's been selling packaging for 20 years is an expert in packaging. Right. right. And if you use him properly, he's going to make you, he's going to make you an expert in literally five minutes. You get come in here, right. he's going to get you right up to speed and you're going to do what took him, let's say, five years to learn. He's going to put you up to speed in five minutes. And he's going to say, this, 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 this is where you need to go next, or I can actually do this for you here. And if you stay open to that and keep following the, the I call it the treasure hunt, you're going to end up at what you want, like right. very quickly, without having any experience. Because right. I guess a big fear is like, they're afraid to go down the rabbit hole because like once you hit maybe packaging, it might open doors to like so many different options and that's an analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis. Right? right. And actually I'd like to draw on the like the fine line between conviction and reiteration because no one really knows what they're doing, like right. you mentioned. So just one step forward, but how do you take the time to iterate and say, are we actually doing the right thing? It's trial and error. Trial and error. I think it's trial and error, and I think that as a, an entrepreneur, you're going to make mistakes, and if you're a good entrepreneur, you're going to learn from them. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest thing about entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, is not being the smartest, not being this and that. It's executing. It's getting up every day and executing. It's making, you know, like movement steps forward. It's that's an entrepreneur. You have to be able to execute a, an idea to something, to something concrete. You know, everyone has ideas. Every, I'm sure there's people creating this right now. There's a million people doing the same things that you're trying to do, but it's right. who's going to execute it and who's going to want it, you know, bad enough. Who's going who's gonna to work the hardest and who's going to do it better? And, you know, putting putting care and love into it is, is a really big thing. And, you know, I've made a ton of mistakes personally. And, you know, as an entrepreneur, you know, I'm learning. I, I want to be on the learning curve at all times. You know, I ask them if they're more experienced in certain things. And, you know, I'll take the hit, I'll fall. But if I don't get back up, I'm not an entrepreneur. But, uh, you know, and that's the biggest that's thing. That's true. You know, if you can't get back up and you're not in the right industry, you should go and do something else. And I think that us three as a team, and even the people that work with us, you know, in the front and the back, they all have that mentality. They get hit and they're back up right after that. And, you know, you forget about what happened then, you go right away to there. You know, and that's a big thing with us three that's been a success, I'd say. I want to touch on conviction and uh, what was the other word? Uh, reiteration. Reiteration. So, question. You have to have it's it's it, it's it's more art than it is science in the sense that how naive you are has to be perfectly down the middle. So you can't be too naive, but you have to be naive enough to continue pushing forward. And um, being naive is in the sense of taking not so being too naive is not looking at what's actually happening in front of you. So you want to follow intuition, but not blind intuition. What do I mean by that? Go to a grocery store. Simple, if you're getting into the grocery business, go to a grocery store. If you're getting in, and go just see the lay of the land, you know? We've heard this in many podcasts before, it's not new news. Go look at the lay of the land. And find visually 
what's going to speak to you in that lay of the land. And if your conviction is right, you're most probably going to be successful. That being said, I think you have to take a risk on your conviction because that's part of entrepreneurship. How you're successful in, in anything, not just entrepreneurship, investing, investing or anything is to, um, is to take a right turn when everybody's going left. And if you choose right, you win big. If you choose wrong, you lose. Mm -hmm. So have that perfect amount of naive, naivete to follow your intuition, but don't be stupid about it. Right. That's that's right. really what it comes down to. Just to build on yours, a big thing that happened at the beginning, I don't know if you guys remember, someone, or obviously the name, but told us to stop with the posting of um, being ourselves, like showing the, you know, our fun aspects to no, it. Yeah. You know, it's a food yeah. business yeah. that we need And you should be serious. serious, you're gonna have buyers see it. You know what, buyers love what we do. They, they tell us you guys are different. You're, we go into a grocery store, they notice us, and they're like, we just love you. And you know, we didn't listen to that guy, even though he was experienced in another industry, smart person, we, we took it and we, we went with our gut. And I think that's another thing that we all do at the same time. We go with our gut and, and it's been, you know, there's been times where we're wrong, but a lot of the time we're right and it's helped. Yeah, and listening too. So like to, to go back into iteration, but 10 hours before going to printing press, the original uh, iteration of this was supposed to say deliciously guilt-free. It was not even the machine. Not bad. Yeah, but this is what was happening. And then we'll even get into how we became two squares yep. and how the name, because this, there was four different names before we got to Midday Squares. Um, again, it wasn't sitting there for a month thinking about it. Every day we were moving forward. It was like, okay, hey, Midday Coco's our name, that's our brand. Two weeks later, new idea, we're still moving forward. And the brands continued, the packaging was evolving with names. It was very modular. Um, but to get back to it, we were 10 hours literally before going to print press. And I had, we had showed a lot of people. And I saw a lot of, uh, of our male audience not, for whatever reason, uh, connecting with Delicious and Guilt Free. Mm -hmm. They just weren't. And then it took a woman. I, I was at Baton Rouge eating. A girl's eating next to me by herself. Overhears me talking with my friend. Uh, shout out Arie, love you. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's like, you know, Nick, honestly, the Deliciously Guilt Free just just doesn't make me feel like I, I, I connect to it. I, I feel it's, it's feminized um, and I just, I just don't connect with it. Mm -hmm. And I was rattled by that. And then the girl said, excuse me, I overheard you. And she's like, you know what? I'm fucking tired of being told that I need to be worried about guilt when I'm eating product as a woman. I don't want to hear it anymore. I just want to eat the product because I like it. And so to now hear the female crowd react that way, it was like, I already had reservations about it because I was, we started, when we first came up with Deliciously Guilt Free, we were high-fiving, like, we got this, this is, this is the greatest, like, tag. Yeah, yeah. And then I started fading from it, and I came home that night, I looked at her, I said, we can call it Deliciously Guilt Free. She's like, I know what you're saying, like, I agree, and now we're stuck because what the hell did we put on this packaging? And that's where the intuition comes back to play is what are we? What are we trying to achieve? Everybody in the market is trying to achieve another thing. We want to be known as the chocolate company. So what are we going to do? We're going to double down on that. And Made With Real Chocolate was born at that moment, 10 hours before going. Called up my art uh, designer and was like, I need you to just figure out how to because the deliciously guilt free, by the way, looks so good on the packaging. Right, I can imagine. Yeah, so so I'm just like, figure out how to make made with real chocolate look just as sick. And she came back and she nailed she it. Killed it. Nice. She killed it. Nice. And uh, so that iteration is like, that's it's constant iteration. Right. It, never, it never stops. You Do know? you put specific times, like in the morning, you all sit down together? No. No? No. Uh, I think Mondays is very important. Mondays, okay. We all regroup yeah, on Mondays. Yeah, we do a Monday morning meeting. Lazy meets <laughs> But no, I wanted to just say one of one other thing about you asked the success uh, that we were been, that we've been right, having. Right. So I think as being an, this is not my entre first entrepreneurial journey. I think product market fit is extremely important, mm -hmm. and you cannot be fooled. Uh, you know, you can have a great product as an entrepreneur, you can have a great business, you can have a great idea, and it can mean nothing. You know, and and that I think is a scary thing. But when we launch this, it's like you, we just had it. It was product market fit. The product, it was product market fit. I don't know how else to say it. Yeah, and, it was and the branding and the entrepreneurs and the everything. It just fit. Yeah, and, and you could before, right? 
it, before you actually oh yeah one. from day one it just nailed yeah and how do you know because you, you just know you just feel it it's, 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 it's a feeling feel. okay. I had always yeah I had always heard it before so if you ask anybody in Montreal that I, I would say a lot of people have seen us fail publicly all of us yeah, yeah. Uh, in different areas because we've all started different things and so the um, it's 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 no question that it's not like we just stepped up the bat and hit it. Yeah, right? There's no. been a lot of pain and heartache for each one of us individually prior to this in different areas. And so I always heard that when you have product market fit, you don't have to ask, you just know. And I had always been like, what does that mean? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I can tell you what it means is we don't even remember launching this business. Don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. No, no, yeah, there was like a picture no, that we, I don't. We still so don't know so the story. Yeah. Till this day, we can't give a straight answer because it was such a blur, and we just went into we went into dynamic pumping. But product there. market fit is when your business is driving you and you're not driving the business. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a bull, and your job as the entrepreneur is to stay on it. That's yeah. interesting though, yeah. because we always say be a cause, not an effect, and now you're stating almost be a cause, be an effect, right? Yeah, essentially, because well. I think it's it's a double-sided sword what you just said because you need to have what you said in order for the opposite to happen. Right, because any cause has it. Yeah, exactly. Right, sure. So it's 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 the it's kind of you threw the ball at the wall and now you have to catch it because of the velocity of it coming back. Right. Um, but if you never threw the ball, the ball would have never came right. back. So to, to right, that right. answer. But 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 yeah, ever since that day, it's been a bull and we've been just trying to ride it. Nice, nice. And actually going into retail now, so. I remember a tactic that was used it was when you're going to like apparel fashion retail is you go and you tell the retailer, hey listen, try our products, we'll give them to you for free, then you pay people to go and buy it. Yeah. For example. How did you you probably didn't do that? No, no but, but we, we got we got, we like, got right, accused right, of doing let that. Me tell no way. tell me the story of being so, accused of doing this. So we're doing a test run in a very well known uh, You can say it because yeah, we told, yeah, we, we, told. Love, we love them anyways, Copper Branch. Oh no, uh, yeah. love the place. Good for you, yeah. um, so I go in there and I go deliver. I I go to place the products usually. You know, shout out Jake the delivery shout boy. Shout out Jake the delivery boy. I'm a delivery boy. Anyways, long story short, I went in, delivered the goods there. He was the, the manager was super pumped. Got him jacked up. Had fun. I said, you're, I'm like, it's gonna sell. I told him, I'm like, I'm like, you're gonna be giving me a call later. And he's like, he's like, whatever. He's like, looking at me like I'm kind of like I'm off the wall. No know? one takes it seriously. No, they, I come in in a jersey. You know, like I look like a clown. He doesn't even understand what's going on. I get the product, I put it there. I go, I'll see you soon. I come back to the office. I whatever. We had a good day so far. I think like four hours later, he calls me. And I, I'm sitting I, on the floor. Nick's on the floor. I don't know why, but I'm no so one tired. was around. No one was around, but Nick was sitting there. I, I got a call. And he's like, he's like, hello. I'm like, hello. I don't have the number, right? So I don't know who he knows. <laughs> he goes, it's I got he goes whatever he says his name and he's like he's like, so you sent your mom here to come get he's the like product. He's like on the manager called. Yeah, he's like, manager. he's like you sent the, you sent your mother to come get the product. And I said, What? I said, My mother uh, doesn't chop a copper brand. She you know she she doesn't even she, she she's never tried it. And he's like, You're sending people here. I'm like, what do you mean? So I started panicking I'm, in my head I'm like Who's calling me? Tell me I'm sending people because I'm not. I post it on social. Maybe people are going for my social. So I go to Nick. I go, Nick, Nick, Nick. Someone's on the phone. So I'm literally like, I'm literally dead asleep on the floor in the deepest sleep because at this point the business we weren't sleeping a lot. Right. And I was just so exhausted. He wakes me up and he just hands me the phone. So I'm like, okay, cool. And he's like, just answer. Hello. And I remember saying this, the, the copper brand manager speaking to me, I'm like, yo, sorry, dude, I just fucking woke up off the floor. Like, uh, my brain is just getting, and he starts laughing on the other side. He's like, could you send me more packages or this or that? I'm like, wait, my brain's still not calibrated. Give me two seconds. <laughs> so he's like, he's like, can I ask you a question? Did you send people in here to buy the product? And now I'm realizing what's happening. I'm like, oh, you think like we sent, because right, people right, do right, this, right, right. you know? Yeah. Is it going practice actually? But a lot of people. Yeah, do. okay, yeah. Well, sure. Especially in fashion. Right, I'm sure. fashion the most, like, yeah. you know. Especially like, in fashion. Yeah. Yeah. Or people have fake reviews. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I'm like, no, dude, like, uh, we just posted on our Instagram that we were there, but we didn't send. Those are all real people, you know? But so it's a funny story because you're absolutely right. Uh, people would do that, but we didn't yeah. do it in this case. And they were convinced that we did it. But then uh, the owner, uh, Rio, shout out Rio. Shout out Rio. Shout out Rio. Shout out Rio. Of Copper Branch called us after, and he's a good cat, and he was like, he knew we were. In, I said, Rio, just go look at the videos we posted on Instagram. You know, like, 
Because it was real. We, uh, and I just remember the moment when he said, you sent your mother. I said, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> was it actually real? No, I, no, it was the, the manager. Ma that was the manager. I think it was West Island. West Island. West Island. Byron? Uh, or uh, Carlos. DDO, the DDO. Oh, okay, no, no. So anyway, it was just, uh, I was I was shell-shocked when I heard it, so I didn't know what to, I kind of panicked, I don't know why, and and at the end, whatever, we're, we're now going to be there soon, so in, in the end, we... Uh, it was good, it was good, yeah, it was yeah, good, right, right. yeah, but uh, yeah, product market fit, man. Technically, yeah, we do send people, we, go, we make videos in the stores, so... Yeah, but they're real customers, customers. they're real customers, right, 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 just, right, it's right. people that are our, yeah. our family, our fam right. in terms of cult, uh, yeah. our following, not the family of this. But it's, um, um... It's like at the end of the day, it's just directing traffic. That's all we're doing. It's natural traffic, and we're just like air traffic control, sending gears where you can go get the stuff. Right, right. And now, uh, iterating, because man, we could go on for hours. We could yeah. go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So many questions still left. But I like to iterate lastly on the fact that you mentioned entrepreneurs. It's like a big name you take on. It's like it's an identity that is almost superhuman. And I guess a lot of people get intimidated by that or like, well, I have imperfections, I'm kind of, an, I'm not an entrepreneur, but I'm sure, like you guys mentioned, you have your own failures. Maybe could you bridge the gap between someone who's just started who has absolutely, they don't know what they don't know. I say, yeah, and, I say yeah. we do this. Why don't we finish, because this is the final, right. is this closing? Just, yeah, why don't we each talk about what entrepreneur means to each one of us and, uh, and, and, right. and why it should be an approachable subject for everybody. Right, and maybe like any failures that you specifically Oh yeah, I, I thought, that's, yeah. that's what I'm gonna get onto. So, um, you can start. Sure. Um, I had a fashion, well, clothing brand um, called Hector Clothing. Um, I worked on that uh, journey for about three and a half years. I learned a lot. Pause. Yeah. She was hand chosen by Lady Gaga to design a full dress for her to wear on a one hour special for New York Times. <laughs> yeah, why she never says that story. Story. I, I just don't it's the hottest thing need okay, to preach next, you know? next. anyways no, cool. so no I did have a lot of um, celebrity celebrities reach out actually um, which was crazy because mm. I wasn't I, I didn't really do PR I wasn't really in that world but um, yeah I was living in New York and um, uh, traveling between New York Hong Kong and China um, I did manufacturing and production all these things um, for clothing, but I did the biggest thing that that I my biggest mistake with this journey was that I never wore the clothes that I produced, and I met the owner and designer of Chrome Hearts uh, when I was in New York, and they're a major major fashion clothing brand, and he told me he does not leave the house without wearing his clothes, and he's been doing that for as many years as he's existed, and he and and that resonated with me because it's like. Why am I not wearing my own clothes? You know, right. if I, if if I believe in what I'm doing in my brand, I need to. The only person in the world that needs to like it is you, and needs to wear it is you. Because if you're wearing it and you're liking it, there's gonna be another person who's gonna want to wear it and like it. And so I think that was one of my biggest mistakes. And I also reached for the stars too quickly. I had a lot of meetings with major retailers like Bergdorf, Goodman, Neiman Marcus, Saks, Barney's, and these people didn't care that I was a startup. They destroyed me. They wanted samples within five days of meeting with them. They wanted things that I that that drove me out of business. You know, as being an entrepreneur, you don't have excess amount of money to do custom samples and custom color palettes and all these things. And so I that that put me in a negative. You know, instead of going to smaller boutiques and like we're doing now and working my way up in terms of getting the customer to buy into what I'm doing and getting them to you know, go into the bigger guys and say, hey, why don't you carry Hector clothing? Um, and so if I had to do it all over again as a fashion entrepreneur, I would wear my clothes every single day as promotion, and I would start by winning the hearts of all the people in my own city, um, doing a lot more social, being myself on the camera, and and starting from store to store, and then building my way up to the department stores and so on and so forth. But what does entrepreneurship mean to me? It means, um, you know, you as an entrepreneur, you get to, the fun part about entrepreneurship is you get to do what you believe in, you know, be who you, be who you are. Um, and so I think for me as a dreamer, that allows me to have the opportunity 
um, being an entrepreneur, I, I, I allow myself to have the opportunity to dream and to create and to build. And I think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship. As much as, it, uh, as how hard it is and how challenging it is, there's nothing more rewarding than being able to have an idea and, and make it into something concrete. And that drives me every single day. Um, if we talk about accessibility, I'll touch on accessibility because it is an intimidating subject matter. Um, no one actually knows what the hell they're doing and I can, I can tell you that because I've, I've worked with some really big name entrepreneurs all the way down to little name entrepreneurs and um, even those guys, I remember when I'd ask them for things, they'd be like, man, you think we have this figured out? Like, we don't even have this figured out, you know? Um, and, and two, just like in myself, you know, people are like, well, so like myself, I, I, I've, I've battled consistently with self-doubt, uh, depression, I don't like the word, but just highs, lows and all that, stage fright, I've gone to Toastmasters to work on all that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so like people think there's this like thing that they need to be uh, in order to be an entrepreneur. You don't need to be anything. You just need to be an executor uh, is number one. And uh, at the end of the day, not be afraid to make mistakes. And I'm gonna leave it on a story. I stole this story from Scooter Braun, the manager of Justin Bieber. Shout out Scooter Braun. Um, it's a phenomenal story and I think this is a perfect metaphor for entrepreneurship. So he goes, the New York Yankees uh, basically are gonna hold an open audition where you gotta just come to the stadium and step up for bat. And it's gonna be a packed stadium, so you're gonna have 60,000 plus people watching. And anybody that hits a home run on their top pitcher is gonna get a one-year contract with the New York Yankees. So he goes that day, the news spreads, and everybody lines up to take a shot because it's free. And they're gonna wait until someone hits a home run. But the first guy gets up to bat, swings, misses, and the crowd starts to boot. That guy drops his bat and leaves right away. This is the crowd boot. Second guy steps up to bat, swings, misses. Crowd starts to boo. Stays though, swings again, misses. The boos get a little bit louder. By his third one, people are throwing stuff onto the field. <laughs> he breaks and he leaves. The third guy comes up to bat and he sits there and the boos keep getting louder and people start screaming to the point where they're chanting, get off, get off. But he stays in the pocket and he keeps swinging and swinging and swinging. And by his 60th swing, he hits a home run. The next day in the paper, all that's written in the New York Times is that man hits a home run and signs with the New York Yankees. And he's praised by the city for hitting that home run. Nowhere in the article do they talk about the 60 misses and his ability to withstand the booze in the crowd. That's entrepreneurship. Yes. How many times are you willing to swing without being kicked off? Mm -hmm. That's all it's story. <laughs> no, but it's very true because I've experienced that. You know? What a story. Yeah. We start time. Well, as for me, um, I'm actually opposite of her. You know, she, she was talking about how um, she didn't wear her stuff, right? In my previous business, which I failed with, um, what was it? It was a clothing brand, college clothing brand. I went to college campuses and pop-up shops, but the one thing I did do um, right in terms of you know success, I would say, is is wearing my stuff and making people know that I'm so passionate about it in terms of loving it and you know wanting to wear it. So and built a big following. And I built a big following, but I built it on the fact that I did exactly what she didn't do in that field. But on the other flip side, I had no execution organization. So. For me, I was still an entrepreneur because I was doing something, I was doing what I loved. I found that you know, doing what you love, you're gonna put your passion and, and, and you're gonna put energy in. I was working still. I would go on the road for two months, you know, and be out of home and you know, be tired, I'd go, I'd go kill it. But you know, the back of the business and my, my failures were taking over and it was actually you know, making me go from here. But I still never gave up. I never stopped. You know, they, it was two years. It was a year of hustling like that. I was exhausted. I, was the, I had the flu. I, was, I, I had everything going wrong. I still kept going. And when I kept going, I learned. And now I'm in a new venture, and I've learned already, I'm already on my, whatever, third month, fourth month with you guys, and my execution and organization is slowly getting better. Yes. But it's not perfect, and it's never gonna be perfect, but I listen, and an entrepreneur should always listen. And to me, I've learned from these two, and others, there's many others, that have taught me what my failures are, and what my failures are, if I don't grow on them, I believe you can't be an entrepreneur. So. To me, at the end of the day, if you want to be an entrepreneur, 
make sure to learn from your your failures and actually understand them like don't don't ignore them never never say oh no I'm, I'm, I'm too good at it it's never gonna happen no I was like that in my first venture and that's why I failed and today but would you say largely that if it wasn't for Chase out there, we probably wouldn't even yeah. be here today. Yeah, so I, I got to give credit to the brand, at least. Like, I, yeah. it's, it's, some stuff still sells, I don't have to refund people, you know? <laughs> but no, which it, 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 honestly, at the end of the day, I apply a lot of my skills from my past thing, you know? And I, I find that with relationships, I find with anything in life, you know? Anything. You taught us everything for social. Uh, no, for, I, didn't. I didn't. No, no, you did. I, I swear, we, yeah. wouldn't, we wouldn't have the same social game if it wasn't for his Chase and Hunter days. But I think as an entrepreneur, it's very important that you know your strengths and your weaknesses. Exactly. And you, exactly. You need to know them to be a good entrepreneur. And I find that I'm still not there yet. And I, I don't think I'll be there for, you know, a couple of years actually. But I am taking brick by brick and that's what's important. And, you know, we could discuss it, but we go see a, a business therapist. Um, you know, try to go once every two weeks. But it's to work on the dynamics and it's actually working on our failures that we have. And it's building from it. And, you know, we've already had one session, very successful. Very. Because, you know, you see all these good vibes only and bad, no bad vibes or anything. That is our motto here. It's our culture. And if we don't work on that, I, I still we're think frauds. Yeah, we're frauds. Exactly. Yeah, frauds. we'll probably and, fail. And entrepreneurship is about it is about failing and growing Literally. from the failure. That's all it is for me. At the end of the day, ça suffit. <laughs> Guys, I have nothing more to say. This was awesome. Was Thank awesome. you for having me. Fuck yeah! How do we close this? That's it. Woo!